Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Bristol. Uh, this might be a bit strange for some of you. Last year, Bradford. <laughs> this year, Bristol. Next year, Bristol. <laughs> Ten years later, Bristol. And a decade of delivery is ahead of us. Um, I'm clearly new into the city. Uh, two months old. Last time I spoke to Congress was after six long, successful years. Uh, rebuilding a very different city. Uh, I've been asked to talk to you about the history of the city, which I'm not an authority on, but uh, you will enjoy, um, and then talk to you a little bit about a few thoughts about where we go from there. So, let's move on. So, where are we come from? Bristol has a great spirit of adventure. It's clearly known, it's clearly visible. It's a young city, yes, it's over a thousand years old. It's a maritime trading activities that shaped the city of the, of the previous centuries, particularly the city centre. Commercial port is now located at Avonmouth. Let's just take a walk back through history. So, in the 11th and 12th century, the medieval wall city was sited at the narrowest point of the River Swoon and Avon. Here. The street pattern was centred on a high cross at the crossroads. Here. And St. Augustine's Abbey was established outside the city walls to the west, which is now the cathedral. In the 13th and 14th century, reflecting Bristol's growing importance as a European port, the River Froome was diverted to create an extra quayside space in the city. First major infrastructure development. The city expanded to the south and east, set behind a new fortified port wall. Here. By the time we moved to the 15th and 17th century, after the Civil War, the castle was demolished and a new residential district was created linking the old market. The castle demolished, residential district. Bristol merchants were now trading across the world. As you move into the 18th century, we see that the city is expanding. Queen Square was laid out in 1700, here. And further residential developments were created along the north and west along the Ray. I'm so glad there's a pointer, <laughs> So. Moving on. In the 19th century, the floating harbour was created in 1809 to combat the high tidal range of the Avon. That is something we still have to do with today, clearly. And the Avon was diverted into a new cut here. Temple Mead Station was built by Grinnell in 1840, creating a direct rail link between London and the industrial growth of the city. In the early part of the 19th century, the iconic presence of Clifton were built. So, where does that leave us now? That leaves us with a city in which average earnings are greater than the UK average. It leaves us with a city which has an employment rate of 71%. It leaves us in a city which has a, uh, a boundary of about plus one million people in terms of Tintinland and 432,000 within the city boundary. But yet maybe 300,000 of one age population. It leaves us with a city in which 42% of the population are qualified to degree level. It leaves us with a city in which 27% cycled or, or walked to walk. So the city is well above the average in many areas, but that is not where our ambition lies. As a city, we want to go beyond best in class and try and redefine the class. How? Well, two months in, I'm not sure. It's not clearly all my job. There's lots to be done and lots to be discovered. The city is a prosperous city. You can see it, you can feel it. But Bristol, like most British cities, has had its fair share of engineering and planning nightmares. It's built infrastructure which limits its path to sustainability. So many British cities are left with a sustainability deficit. We have massive geriatries, motorways that sit by the roots of houses, disconnected neighbourhoods. There are prosperity gaps, 
there's education and payment gaps, there's health gaps, affordability gaps. But we've got a very strong foundation. And this foundation has been laid by many, many others. So, greater Bristol. I want to make Bristol greater. Greater locally, and so greater globally. It's a very big statement. That's a journey. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. A city needs great places, great businesses, and fundamentally needs great people to get to that point. I lead the place directory. That is one of four. Alongside me is people, neighborhoods, business change, and we all work to the city of the it begins. And all of us work to George and Mary. So what does the place do? Its aim is to build better lives and better places. Its aim is to help others succeed by leading on the spatial, infrastructural, economic, cultural, physical, and sustainable development of Bristol. You will know that I like to work at every scale. That they're very small things, they're very, very large things. And it's crucially important in the meshing of the city. So we will continue to do that work, but crucially, it's the human scale that matters. The human scale is for me a happy scale. Smart cities will be cities full of humanity, capable of enabling their cities to succeed, citizens to succeed, I should say. They'll be integrated, innovative, above all intelligent. Specifically about how they use their opportunities and their resources for their present and their future populations. So, a happy city is a city that can close the streets and make something special. Five days before the blue slide occurred, I wasn't very happy. We know we were notified that over 100,000 people wanted to slide down Park Street. Um, we had thought that it was, well, we, had, we were meant to believe it was about 400 previously. But the uniqueness of this project was the fact that it was crowdfunded partially, council supported it. But because of the crowdfunding and what was built up across social media, a body of 100,000 people decided that they wanted to slide down the street on Sunday. Fantastic. Very much proves that citizens want to have fun in the city. What we had to do, my kind of terror of thinking and only branded as a health and safety guru, was the fact that uh, we had to make it happen. And as it said to me, we just have to make sure it goes on. So it went on. And people had a fantastic time. 100,000 people packed into a city on a Sunday and they slid down a lot of water. Before the city, you know, made national headlines. Clearly, the image that was projected at Bristol was it was a city of fun and an opportunity for its citizens. Now, let's talk about fun. Fun is important, play is important. It's a key, key element to <coughs> in bringing communities together. It's fundamental in the sharing of the city, as no one genuinely owns or truly owns the city. We're all guardians of it, we're all passing through it. We're here to leave our positive mark. So there's very big stuff to be done. By December 2018, new high-speed electric trains. Passengers will be travelling between London, Paddington and Bristol in one hour and 20 minutes. There's a lot to be done in Bristol, Temple Meeks, a big city train station is to be redeveloped. By 2018, uh, Metro West will be delivered, uh, developed, I should say, in the major growth areas across all the enterprise zones. We have a £200 million project investing in high quality, reliable, frequent uh, public transport system, integrated approach to public transport across the city. We just read good buses and read good routes, which will show up on time. We're working to make Bristol increasingly attractive to walk, cycle, travel and use public transport. But we also have to be able to learn how to ride your bike, have to learn how to enjoy the city in which you inhabit. So moving to a very, very big scale, the Enterprise Zone. At the heart of the Enterprise Zone, we're going to build a marina here. That's the train station, just in case you were going to work on that. Uh, one of the largest place projects in the UK, 70 hectares of land, uh, including Temple Railway Station, an opportunity to you know, create a business gateway to the West that is focused on creative, digital and low carbon sectors, targeting over 4,000 new jobs, 
70,000 jobs are turned 37, 240,000 square meters of development. The arena, a very, very large project, um, an indoor entertainment venue, 12,000 seater, has been um, promised before the city, but not yet delivered. Big job to do here, uh, quality scheme, pull out the ground, and to act as an anchor for the whole of the enterprise zone, a major cultural anchor. So, business. All businesses are important to us. But we need to focus on the core sectors and on the growth sectors. And we need to develop the talent for those cities, for the city, the businesses of the future. Moving on, energy security will be a key factor in our future sustainability. The Council has set a target to reduce carbon emissions from its own buildings, 720 mil, uh, 2005, I should say, by 40% by 2020. This is one of the most ambitious carbon reduction plans in the country. The council has made a land bar. It's progressing an ambitious program to develop many affordable homes. The target on that affordable homes is huge. In 2017 18, over 900 affordable homes. We've got a huge mountain to climb to deliver those. And yes, maybe all the uneasy sites are gone. Bristol has a vibrant, growing uh, food economy. Great community interest in production of its own food, tremendously important. We will continue to promote and support the independent economy. Over 70% of the city's shops, cafes, restaurants, bars are independent. Now, residents park. Kevin's laughing there. Yeah. But it's not without controversy. You know, building the city is very difficult. The residence park that's been in Clifton Village has created a lot of controversy. If you were to ask anybody in Clifton about where we are with that, I'm sure they're bound to raise this issue. So, we all know that cities are complex. We've had five, we want five with mixed use spaces where businesses and homes, work, play, life, all happen side by side. But all of those uses are competing for the same space. There is only so much space within the city. The unique thing about Bristol is the fact that it doesn't have a very clearly defined central business district. It has many business districts. So it has all of that vibrancy and it has all of that independence for the business districts within the city and uh, geography as itself. So fundamentally we need to share the city and we need to share the spaces in which the city uses and it creates tension. We're on with the planning of that, fundamentally trying to understand it and trying to achieve balance within the city. So I'll now summarise. Fundamentally, I like to keep one eye on the past, one eye on the future, and two eyes on the present. It's in the present where the future will be built. It's concentrating on the present where we can build the future sustainability of this city. It's a great city, and I'm very humbled at the opportunity to give it my best. Thank you very much. Enjoy your time.